Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Nazara Technologies Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hello, uh, good morning everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I would like to welcome all of you to the Q1 FY25 earnings call of Nazara Technologies. We have with us from the management team, uh, Mr. Nitish Mitter Singh, CEO and Joint MD. Mr. Sudhir Kamat, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Rakesh Shah, Group CFO, and Ms. Anupriya Sanada, Head of Corporate Development. With that introduction, let me now hand over the call to Nitish for his opening remarks. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Abhishek. Good morning, everyone. For the first quarter of the financial year ending financial year 2025, uh, we achieved a consolidated revenue of INR 250.1 crores, an EBITDA of INR 24.9 crores, and a PAT of INR 23.6 crores. This is our 14 successive profitable quarters since our IPO, and our focus remains on driving growth with profitability in FY25 and beyond through the organic growth of our existing businesses, as well as M&A, especially in the core gaming sector. Recently, we announced the acquisition of the remaining stake in Paperboat apps. Now our holding is 100%. And we believe that uh, there are several opportunities in front of us that can help grow this business going forward. We also acquired Fusebox, an exciting IP-based gaming studio in the UK that has uh, done very well. And again, we believe this will add a lot of value in terms of potential growth and profitability to our business. Our other subsidiaries have also been very active in the m and side with Nordwin recently acquiring 100% of a leading esports company in Europe, Freaks for You, as well as uh, iconic uh, property Comic Con India. Sports Kida also acquired Soap Central and Teltia's gaming in recent days. In FY24, our team has worked very hard to create a strong pipeline of opportunities that fit our objectives very patiently but at the same time, you know, very actively. And as can be seen, we are now deploying our cash reserves this year to acquire such businesses that we like. And we expect that these acquisitions will help us accelerate towards our FY27 goal of achieving a habit of INR 300 crores that we have set for ourselves. With that, I now hand over the call to Anupriya, our head of corporate development for further business highlights. Thank you and over to you, Anupriya. Thank you, Nitish. Good morning, everyone. As you're aware, Nazara operates across three business segments, gaming, esports, and ad tech. We are well diversified across demographics, geography, and business models. Uh, in Q1 FY25, gaming contributed 37% of revenue and 43% of EBITDA, while esports contributed 53% of revenue and 55% of EBITDA. Our third segment, ad tech, accounted for the remaining share. If you look at businesses within gaming, Kidopia uh, reported revenues of 49 crores, EBITDA of 10.4 crores, with an EBITDA margin of 21.4% in Q1 FY25. Most of our key performance indicators have either improved or stabilized this quarter. Especially our cost per trial has decreased, our activation rate has increased, and the average revenue per user has improved. The churn has also reduced in the sales period. As a result, the rate of decline in subscribers in Q1 FY25 was lower compared to other quarters in the past. With stable or improving KPIs, we anticipate that our subscriber base will begin to grow again in the coming quarters. We are also making progress on, our, on closing IP partnerships, which will provide a boost to organic user acquisition going forward. Moving to Animal Jam. Q1 FY25 uh, revenue increased by 7% to 23.6 crores, uh, driven by the ongoing success and monetization of Vishik coins and the launch of a new pet, Dragons via the Wishing Well, within the game. We had higher investments in user acquisition in Q1 FY25, 
which is expected to pay back over 12 to 18 months time frame. Going to open play, the RMG business, while gross gaming revenues have declined only slightly, that is customers are still playing almost the same, increased GST has led to a sharp decline in net revenue after GST. Our organic focus has been on op enhancing operating efficiencies to achieve profitability within the constraints of the new GST regime. Our esports segment revenue grew by 12%, while EBITDA grew much faster by 85% in Q1 FY25. Going to Nordwin, the Nordwin revenue grew by 3% compared to the last year uh, to 71 crores. However, accounting for the deconsolidation of Wings, which took place in third Feb on 3rd February 2024, the revenue growth is much higher of 35%. The growth is led by uh, strong performance from Nordwin's proprietary IP, including Zandek, Gaming Matters, Comic Con, and others, and the media business, which showed 44% growth year on year. Profitability was muted as, as Nordwin continued to invest in new events and IP. With a healthy pipeline of upcoming events in the next two quarters, we expect accelerated growth for the year ahead with profitability. On the M&A side, Nordwin has increased its investment in Freaks for You Gaming from 13.5% to 57% initially and subsequently 100%, eventually through a share swap deal valued at 271 crores. Notably, Freaks for You reported revenues of INR 223 crores in CY23, and we will consolidate the, uh, Nord, uh, this business in Nordwin from 1st July 2024 onwards. Moving to Sto Sports Kira, Sports Kira continues its growth journey for both revenue and EBITDA this quarter, reporting a year on year revenue growth of 33% in Q1 FY25, while EBITDA increased by 28%. So, uh, Sports Kira has done two acquisitions. In June 2024, the company acquired SoapCentral.com for US dollar 1.4 million, approximately, which is approximately 11.6 crores. This uh, acquisition aligns with an overall strategy of acquiring smaller niche assets and expanding them under full ownership and control for Sportskira. In August 2024, the company agreed to acquire Deltia's gaming in an all-cash deal worth US dollar 900k. Deltia's Gaming produces high-quality content for specific games such as Baldur's Gate 3 and Elder Scrolls Online on platforms including YouTube, Twitch, and its own website. Moving to the third segment, AdTech. During Q1 FY25, we strategically shifted away from lower margin business, resulting in a year-on-year -year revenue drop to 25.7 crores from 27.6 crores. However, gross margin improved significantly leading to a gross profit increase of, of INR, to INR 7.3 crores from 6.2 crores due to a higher share of product business. We continue to invest in product development and increase marketing efforts, especially in the US market, which has kept EBITDA sub subdued compared to Q1 FI24. We expect these investments to positively impact business outcomes in the coming quarter. With this, I conclude my remark and will now open the call for Q&A. I would like to invite Nitish, Sudhir, and Rakesh to join me for this session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abhishek Kumar from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you. Good morning uh, to the management team. Uh, first question is on the GST notice. Uh, I saw uh, that we have got 1100-odd crores uh, of notice. Um, now we understand this is a uh, industry-wide phenomenon. What is our view uh, on this? Um, and is there any provision that we plan to make uh, against uh, this notice? Sure. Uh, uh, let me take that. This is Nitish. So there are a couple of things. Of course, it's an industry-wide uh, known issue, and it is subsidized. Uh, you know, the various hearings are going on. 
and we will see how that pans out as well as the position that uh, the GST council takes. In terms of the notices, they are on not uh, they are on two of our subsidiaries, uh, Open Play and Hala Play. And uh, as you know, both of these do not at this point of time contribute material revenues or profitability to our overall performance. Uh, at this point of time, we do not require to take any provisions on the Nazara balance sheet. Okay, sure. Uh, second, <clears throat> on our uh, recent acquisitions, um, I just wanted to understand, given the uh, you know speed uh, with which we have been uh, acquiring uh, some of these assets, uh, you know, what is the risk and governance framework that we have to select these, uh, you know, to uh, basically assess their future potential, etc. Uh, given yes. these are not in India, and uh, you know we're yeah. doing it at a uh, fast pace. Yeah, thanks. Yes, sure. Again, I'll answer the, that one. You know, uh, while uh, it may look like we are, uh, you know, executing at a very fast pace, there are a couple of points here. One is, uh, as I mentioned in my earlier commentary, uh, you know, most of last year we spent a lot of time diligently looking at opportunities and, uh, you know, going through because we have a very clear framework of opportunities uh, that we want to, you know, go ahead and acquire in terms of the potential business of the company, the management, the structure of the deal, as well as the value that we pay. So I think uh, we've been very selective in what we are buying and not you know, uh, going after every deal that is offered to us. Uh, so that's one point. The second point is uh, also, as you can see, many of our subsidiaries are active in m and whether it is Nordwin, Sportskeeda, for example. And these have focused managements who understand their core business value very well. And alongside support from Nazara and the Nazara uh, corporate strategy team, they are able to execute these transactions, which provides us with a lot of bandwidth. This is, I think, one of the unique, uh, unique positionings of our company's platform that allows us to, you know, do this at a scale uh, with a lot of bandwidth. Lastly, I think there's a common thread of uh, format agreements, uh, you know, legal teams that work on this so that a lot of our, you know, basic thought process of m &A remains constant in the way we have done over the years and also incorporates the learning that we have gathered over the years. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that that's very clear, uh, Nitish. And maybe just one last question again on the, um, uh, you know, acquisition. So uh, this 100% uh, stake in paper boat, uh, uh, you know, it, I think this is the second instance. Earlier we had done it with um, WCC. Uh, yeah. If I'm not wrong. So, uh, you know, what is the rationale here uh, to take this up? Because that would mean that the that the founders of that business will no longer be associated with us. So does that create any sort of uh, risk going forward? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think the founders have done a fantastic work of bringing the business to the stage it is, right? In any business that we would acquire 100%. And we believe that there is potential in the business, which is why we are acquiring 100%. We also believe that the value we are acquiring is, you know, attractive to us and our, our stakeholders, which is why we are acquiring the business. I think uh, if you would look at Sportskeeda as an example, when we acquired, you know, stake from the founder, who built Sportskeeda into a fantastic company. The professional management over there uh, has done a fantastic uh, work beyond that in uh, being able to scale the business to the next level. So we also believe that in uh, the most recent acquisition of Ketopia, for example, uh, by acquiring 100% stake, it opens up a lot of synergies that we uh, directly at Nazara can operate. We do have a strong management team in place and will continuously you know, uh, strengthen it and uh, try and scale the business. We have specific ideas. Some of these we have actually shared in our presentation, which we are very actively working on, which we believe can help Pidopia break out of the kind of you know plateau it has been since a few quarters. Okay, thank you, <clears throat> and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jinesh Joshi from Prabhudas Leeradhar Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is again on Cedopia. I understand you have shared some insights uh, with respect to how you plan to scale the business up, uh, uh, for instance, by uh, 
expanding beyond the us geography or for that matter <clears throat> uh, entering into india but i mean uh, wherever he choose to operate uh, the apple idea if issue will continue to trouble us right so what exactly uh, are we trying to uh, i mean think through uh, why acquiring this balance sheet and how do we plan to get back on the growth path i'm asking this because for quite some time uh, we have seen the subscriber base uh, fall off in kidopia uh, so just your thoughts on that i think the biggest uh, opportunity here is to boost organic traffic and uh, for, for achieving that we need to partner with popular ip characters of kids from all over the world and integrate them into kidopia we are very actively in discussions with many such large ip holders most names you would know but i will not disclose on the call till we have a agreement in place uh, which i believe will lead to a large boost in organic traffic for the company i think what we need to do is move away from the pure user acquisition led model and we have seen competitors of ours in uh, the us for example do very well through this organic ip driven road given that kidopia's core product remains very popular remains very sticky we think the combination of kidopia product with popular ip uh, can be a very successful one and we are hoping that in the coming uh, months we announce and integrate these and take them to market to give a fresh lease of life to the product we still believe there is a lot of potential this can be a much larger scale business but we need to uh, think out of the box which is what we are currently work very actively working on <clears throat> sure by uh, when do we plan to induct uh, the ip characters that you just spoke about you know the companies that we are talking to are very large corporations and therefore they have their own processes we've been in discussions for the last two quarters at least and i believe we are coming to a point where maybe in uh, q2 or latest by q3 we should be able to announce some deals we will go with the uh, content that we have so that it is easily adaptable to these characters so that the time to market is uh, not uh, not uh, you know takes a lot of time i think uh, q3 or latest q4 which is october to december period is when we look at launching uh, ip driven content in kidopia sure uh, sir my second question is on uh, fuse box uh, so from whatever i have understood is that uh, we basically publish games uh, based on uh, popular tv ip uh, so are we supposed to pay any kind of uh, royalty uh, to the production studio that is uh, question one and secondly uh, if our game is dependent on some uh, tv show or an ip uh, for that matter basically the content intelligence is with uh, someone else and we are just trying to uh, basically mimic it so just wondering how durable and uh, successful this format can be yeah no it is uh, actually you know uh, the way this works is firstly of course it's actually an ip play so similar to what we are talking about kidopia which is licensing popular ip in this case also uh, the studio is licensing popular ip which gives them a significant boost in organic traffic so in fuse box we can already see the success of uh, what ip can do which is what we are trying to replicate in uh, kidopia and if you've seen the fuse box numbers we uploaded right you've seen rapid growth Uh, with a lot of the revenue coming from iOS, despite the IDFA issues, etc. Now uh, the model that works is basically a revenue share. So usually you are paying net revenue after, in some cases after UA, in some cases before UA. Uh, you are paying, you know, anywhere from 12% to 20% uh, range for IP. But that cost generally is lower than the cost that you would pay for user acquisition. So it, it, the margin profile is much higher even after factoring in for this cost. In terms of content, for example, in the case of Fuse Box, while you draw on some of the characters of the of the show, the content is actually fairly delinked. It's it's within the guidelines of the show, but it is uh, pretty delinked. And with now with uh, AI etc., the ability to produce this content is much faster. with fusebox particularly why we were very excited is that they've got a proven engine for narrative based story based games and we believe that beyond the current ips that they have one which is very successful one which is going to launch in the next few months we believe this is we can take this engine across the world in different geographies partner with local uh, you know popular television health serials or shows 
and launch. So I think it's quite a scalable platform that we've acquired and we will build on. Uh, sure, sir. One last question from my side. Uh, I believe we still own about uh, forty percent in a brand PL, and our exposure is about uh, fifty-three crores as of date. Uh, but I believe the business is not making money, and currently uh, we are also evaluating options to raise money. So, just wanted to know: uh, Have we taken any write down in our investments so far within brand PL? Uh, no. So we we own forty percent, and we've uh, as you know that we deconsolidated this business uh, due to two reasons one they wanted to venture into the laptop space which was not you know conducive to our own model uh, or where we wanted to go and second it was uh, not able to you know it was making losses which we could not uh, really want to sustain so at this point of time we are evaluating options to either sell the with our stake if we can get a buyer or uh, the company is uh, looking to raise capital uh, at this point of time we have not taken any impairments but uh, there is a potential risk of impairment in the future got it sir uh, all the best for your future acquisitions and good luck thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of manan puladia from n mkp securities please go ahead Sir, I would request you to please use your handset. Uh, I am on my handset. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi, uh, hi, Nitesh. Uh, so my first question is on the data works business. I think it's been I'm not sure five or six quarters or more since we've acquired the business. Ladies and gentlemen, Hello. we have lost the connection of the current participant. We will move on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of Samrat Patel from Equus Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for providing me this opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes, uh, yes sir. Samrat. Yeah. So uh, uh, I had three questions. Uh, the first one is uh, with the BGMI uh, Master Series tournament now streaming on Star Sports. How should we think about the growth trajectory and a margin outlook for esports segment uh, this particular year? So I am going to call for Deer to take up uh, questions around the esports business. Sure. Uh, so that, uh, I think as you mentioned, uh, streaming has started. Um, in this quarter, if you look at the numbers, we have seen an uptick in media revenues uh, for Northern business, so almost a 45% kind of an uptick uh, compared to the same time last year. Um, that doesn't actually reflect a lot of the BGMI market series revenue yet, so that will still come in the coming quarter. Uh, so we do expect uh, a pretty nice growth on that front. Uh, would that quantum be similar to what we had uh, last time uh, when uh, the streaming used to happen on Star Sports, or uh, is there any material difference in terms of uh, media revenue? No, I think it's still a little early to say that. Uh, earlier with Star Sports, there was, uh, apart from the series, there was also different packages that we were uh, providing. I think on that front, there is still work uh, being done. Uh, so I think maybe just wait a quarter or so, and then we'll give you a more detailed update on that. Okay. okay. And uh, apart from that, uh, uh, like Considering the smash entertainment, uh, which operates uh, the physical entertainment centers across various cities in India, and uh, uh, like, how do you envisage the synergy between Nazara's core gaming business, uh, esports business, and uh, the Smash Entertainment going forward? Yeah, I'd just like to first call out that Smash. Uh, as you know, it's in a NCLT like process. Um, so the committee of creditors has selected Nazara as the preferred bidder, but uh, it still awaits NCLT court approval. So that we think will take a few more months. So until then, we are not really uh, we can't say anything much about. Smash at this point. But just broadly from a strategic point of view, the way we see it is uh, there is an emer emerging kind of hybrid gaming model that we see where uh, you will have physical centers like Smash or others, uh, which also become an avenue for online games like ours to have uh, cross selling synergies. The same customer segment is there and they can get exposure to both sides. Um, so we do see uh, synergies, uh, especially with the two parts of our business one is the kids' gaming side with Kiropia and Animal Jam, and the second is with the eSports and live events sites. And I think both will, will hopefully come through in future years. Okay, uh, that was uh, really helpful. And uh, my last question is on RMG. So 
so uh, is there any uh, change in our acquisition strategy in the rmg segment and uh, 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 like if we are uh, cut, uh, like pursuing it uh, how close are we to securing a deal of any significant scale here um, so there's no change in the strategy. We are looking at, uh, uh, as we mentioned in previous quarters, we are looking at uh, sizable companies which are uh, market leaders or in the top three at least in their segments, uh, and that continues to be the focus. So these will be sizable. The alternate thing is which we are also looking at is very small tucking which can uh, combine entirely with open play and use their tech and product platform. Uh, which would be smaller in nature. So both are still in the uh, in the pipeline. I would say where we're working on different deals. It's very difficult to predict uh, when things will close. And specifically in R&D, there is also the added complexity of the uh, of the legacy tax claims which are there. Right. So we do need uh, some resolution. Um, I do believe uh, uh, as we see in the budget, the government has uh, now got the powers to waive uh, fast tax claims. We're just waiting to see how the government uses those, and then uh, I think some of the transactions will close much more quickly. Understood. Understood. Uh, uh, that was it from my side. Thank you uh, so much, and uh, 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 good luck for the upcoming quarters. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Gupta, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, my question is for Nitesh. Uh, it it is all around Smash only. I know you cannot share more details at this point, but I just want to know. Let's say we go ahead with the deal. What is your vision for the next five years? How do you see getting integrated the offline and the online and the revenue growth? Uh, the projection we can see in the next five years. Yeah. So. I'll answer uh, in context to offline or physical gaming zones and entertainment zones versus a specific response to Smash. So we think that, uh, as we mentioned, one is esports uh, with Nordwin, what we have. Uh, Nordwin esports already has a lot of offline tournaments, etc., which we believe can integrate very well with uh, a footprint that we have in the offline gaming zones. I think that is one clear-cut opportunity for us. Uh, the second is we believe that uh, VR, AR, etc., you know, taking off very well. We've been actively looking at acquiring some VR studios, for example, and I think online, offline VR experiences could be also a very interesting play. Uh, third is we want to roll out an online, offline Nazara loyalty platform, which can also integrate into this. So we have several ideas uh, on how we can really make this value accretive for both online and offline. In terms of just the offline entertainment, I think, uh, increasingly with India's growing consumerism, you know, the ability to expand uh, significantly across the country, the scale and opportunity for such businesses over the next years is going to be immense, and we want to uh, have our own, uh, you know, play in the thing. Yeah, th that's quite helpful. So if you can have some tentative number you have in mind which can grow in the next five years in the segment? Not at, not, not at this point. <laughs> Understand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, a couple of questions from me. So, uh, with regards to the Kidopia business, uh, see, I understand that the CPT has remained in, uh, you know, in a bag, and you managed to contain that. But uh, the marketing spends are still pretty low, right? So, uh, you used to have a 2.7, 2.8 million kind of run rate, and it is uh, uh, much lower than that as of now. So. Uh, Given that the subscriber number has been, you know, declining, I take your point that the decline has arrested a little bit, but it's still a decline nevertheless. So why are we not being more aggressive on acquisitions at this point uh, by, you know, increasing the marketing spend? Uh, maybe let me take that one. Uh, so Abhishek, uh, thanks for hosting this and also for the question. Um, 
I think on the CPD side, what you said is correct. I mean, we have kind of managed to keep it at the current level, uh, but that's at the current spend level of about 2.4 million or so. What we've seen in the past is that when you scaled up, uh, CPTs and churn have typically increased a little beyond what we think is a comfortable level for this system. So uh, I think as Nitish said in, the, in one of the earlier answers, um, I think for Kidopia, the growth uh, I think we'll keep the UA probably stable at this level or maybe slightly higher as we can. We, are expo uh, we keep exploring other channels for that. But eventually the bigger chunk of growth will come from uh, non-UA-led measures. So IP integration is probably the number one idea or uh, initiative there, which is where we want to acquire many more organic users. And that's what has to be a bigger group for subscribers. Understood. But uh, if, if we even look at that route, right, so whatever royalties we'll be paying, will that be in the same, I mean, the CAC, will it come to the similar kind of a number uh, as what we are seeing today? So, so we've done various uh, simulations on this, and we've also seen how some of our competitors, uh, not just in case, but also in other segments, such as USIP, have done. And uh, we do firmly believe that uh, the cost, including royalty, of what we pay for those users, um, for the cash there, would be lower than what we're seeing from a purely ULA strategy. Understood. Uh, okay. Uh, now, my next question would be on the pro football network, right? So there you have uh, uh, talked about some uh, changes to the product that has happened. So first, uh, I mean. So PFN has been an exceptional performer for you guys. So exactly what what has been you know uh, modified here, and uh, what kind of growth are you expecting in PFN uh, for for uh, the Q2? I mean the the peak season. Uh, I think it's not so much changes; it's actually new products uh, which PFN has uh, been able to create uh, with the support from the uh, Sports Kira team. Uh, so, uh, PFN had a fairly small team, and Sports obviously has a much larger uh, infrastructure in terms of uh, people who could help them both on the tech side and on the content tool side. Uh, and many tools have been developed, which will then be given to customers in the coming NFL season, which actually starts in September. Um, so, that's what we're looking forward to. In Q1, what you saw, there was about a 50% kind of revenue growth over the previous year. Uh, in, obviously, that's off-season. We are waiting to see if that gets replicated in the actual season as well or not. I don't want to really put a number on it at this stage, but uh, I think by next quarter results, you will start seeing uh, some numbers. Got it. And uh, finally, on uh, the esports business, there also you have spoken about a lot of new IPs which are coming okay. in the next next quarter. Uh, so. Any any clarity on, on what is exciting you there? So, uh, I think there obviously the biggest excitement uh, is, is around the whole free for you acquisition and that uh, allows us to expand into a very high value job to see. And at the same time leverage uh, teams which for us can fit in India, Turkey and other places. Right? So we think that combination is going to be quite powerful. That also brings with it a bunch of IPs. Uh, for those markets, and there's IPs from the India market as well, which are coming up. So I think it's generally very exciting times uh, for North Wayne and uh, Got it. So uh, uh, thank, thanks a lot for the answers. But just a request from my side, if we can give some sort of guidance on what happens to the organic business at least, that would uh, really help us, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to make our models uh, at least for the next one year. Uh, thanks, thanks again. Thank you. The next question is from the line of K. Will Shah, who is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. So my question is related to the publishing division of us. Uh, so I see we have recently tied up with uh, 4G, uh, one of our decent size uh, games, I believe. So uh, I just wanted to understand in detail what is the business model here for publishing? What is the opportunity size and how do we have revenue sharing, etc.? And what are the long-term margins possible in this division as well? Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Cable. So uh, first I want to clarify, uh, what you have signed is a contract for publishing a new game, which is called 4G Domination. Um, there was a game called 4G a couple of years back. Uh, that's a different game from the same team, but we're basically going to be focusing on the new game which is being launched. 
Um, so at this point, uh, we're still in the pre-registration kind of a process uh, or stage right now. We expect a full release to happen around Diwali time, uh, end of October or thereabouts. And our target is to have at least 5 million pre-registrations before that. Uh, if we do that, then the game will be one of the biggest successes out of India. Um, the way uh, the revenue would work is, again, there is a revenue share kind of a structure. Um, uh, it's commercially sensitive, so we've not actually disclosed the percentages, etc. here. But I think uh, uh, broadly the way this would work is, as you would understand, that we as Nazara would invest in the marketing and promoting that game, helping it to scale, and then the revenues get shared between the studio which developed it, Encore and uh, Dot9, and us. Uh, So overall, so you also ask what is the kind of margin structure there? So again, overall for the uh, publishing division, uh, so, sorry, uh, I just wanted to know uh, overall for the uh, publishing division, how does the business model works in general, not only specific to 4G? So publishing follows the same model, which is somebody else which has developed a game which we like and which we think works in our selected market, which could be India, could be Middle East, or could be global rights. Uh, for those markets, Nazara would then invest funds for uh, user acquisition, marketing, branding, any other kind of support which we need. And uh, the revenue typically flows through Nazara, and then a percentage of that is given to uh, the developer. So that's the typical model. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very The next question is from the line of Rahul from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I uh, just wanted to understand, uh, you know, the seasonality, how this some of the newer businesses that we are uh, uh, integrating soon, uh, how this would play out in some of these businesses and even on the uh, revised way, how we have to see from the existing businesses that how this should play out. Um, sorry, Rahul, I didn't exactly get the question. Uh, you talk about so maybe, for Q2 coming up, or uh... yeah, yeah. Uh, so what I'm trying to understand, like for uh, for example, uh, the bigger units like Freaks for You or Fuse Box, uh, what are the uh, right way to think about in terms of the flow of revenue through the year? Are they more seasonal because of the kind of a back end events that they are? Uh, linked to or they are more like uh, uh, through the year kind of a businesses and at an overall level if you could give that you know how the weight of the revenue for Nazara as a company should play out over four quarter uh, is it going to be uh, bigger uh, two big quarters versus two smaller quarter or anything of that flavor would be of help. Sure. So I think uh, Nazara you know is fairly diversified across businesses so it does help us to smooth out these kinds of variations. But at the individual business level, there definitely are seasonalities in place. Um, we'll maybe go through a couple of them individually first. So if you take something like Freak, um, a fix for you, uh, that definitely sees significantly higher revenue in the second half, uh, just given the nature of uh, how tournaments will happen in Europe. Again, this is winter kind of season which works better. Um, similarly, for PFN, there is very high seasonality. The season typically runs from September to Jan uh, for them. Uh, on the eSports side as well as for uh, Sports Kira, um, there is an IPL season, which is Q1. But other than that, for US sports and for the US part of the business, second half is again uh, higher. Ad rates are also higher in that uh, period. So again, from revenue point of view, there is a significant uh, seasonality there. Um, if you look at something like Fusebox, which was the other one you asked. Fusebox, because it is linked to a TV IP, there is a linkage to when the season is airing. And historically, they had high seasonality linked to that. But what the team has done successfully over the last year, and one of the reasons why we really like that business, is they've been able to kind of delink how the seasons in the game go versus seasons on the TV show. So that makes it now a lot more uh, spread out over the course of the year. Um, Overall, uh, if I would say, I think for Nazara as a whole, second half of the year is definitely higher, um, seasonality-wise, uh, in aggregate. But uh, it does balance out a bit more than these individual businesses do. Right, right. And just uh, follow up on the uh, Fusebox uh, question, of course, is 
some more input that you have shared in the, uh, in the PPT. Uh, but just to trying uh, to understand how uh, the scalability potential out here is because I think we are going to widen uh, the number of IPs uh, that it would. I think there's a mention of Big Brother. Uh, so is that already uh, baked into the Jan July number or this is going to be uh, a bigger part of it is going to be uh, in the future? No, all of this is in the future, uh, let me clarify. Um, so the current revenue is almost 90% plus from a single game, which is the Lava Island game. Uh, and that has scaled very nicely over the last year, year and a half of it. And we do expect that specific game itself to continue scaling for the coming quarters and years. In addition, Big Brother is a new game, new IP, uh, new IP based game, which is going to be launched, which we expect to launch maybe by the end of this financial year, early next financial year. Um, what, however, we are most excited about is that the platform that they have built, the tech platform and the product and the processes around it, that can be leveraged for other IPs as well, which is beyond these two, and which we would like to work with the team to figure out uh, for those same markets or other markets as well. And obviously that will require more investment also in terms of team and uh, content creation ability scale. But we do believe there is ability to grow that platform further beyond the first and the second game. Yeah, and one uh, last question from my side. Uh, given that now we have uh, the entire control on the uh, Kidopia business as well, uh, so does that uh, changes the way uh, we could possibly strategize it given that the operational day-to-day uh, -day, uh, is now in a uh, much more uh, control? Is it going to change the way we strategize or uh, it won't, it's more about the consolidation thing that is going to happen but from an operational point of view, it would not have much of a difference. So I think there will be differences which you will see in the coming quarters. Um, I think uh, the consolidation is one part of it, but uh, especially that's in the focus on IP-based games, which Ranupi spoke about, uh, and other expansion plans which we have. Um, I think they will, you will see a difference in the coming quarters. Uh, thank you, that's it so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, Nitish, would you like to? Yeah, thank you everyone for joining the call. I believe uh, that, uh, you know, with uh, all the activity that is currently ongoing, uh, the remainder of FY25 should be exciting for us, and we will continue to work hard to deliver value for all our stakeholders. Thank you very much. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.